In this video, we're going to talk about the brand new Creality Unicorn nozzles that just released in April 2024, and we're going to install them in the Creality K1C. We'll cover why you would want to use different nozzle diameters, how to install the new nozzles step by step, and how to configure Creality Print and Orca Slicer to print with different nozzle diameters on this printer. Let's get started. Why would you want to install different nozzles on a K1C at all? The K1C comes with a 0.4 four millimeter nozzle and all of the unicorn nozzles have a hardened steel tip. That means usually these nozzles will last very long if you're just printing PLA, PETG, ABS or TPU filaments and other non-abrasive materials. I guess for most of us this means we probably never would want to swap out the nozzle on this printer, but there's also other reasons why this makes sense. For example, if you like to push your printer to print a bit faster for prototyping parts where the highest detail is not your concern, a bigger nozzle diameter could help. Also, if you like to print more composite materials that contain fibers and particles like wood composites, those bigger diameter nozzles will help you to avoid under extrusion and eventual clogging issues. Next, let's go step by step through the installation process for a new unicorn nozzle on the Creality K1C. First, we need to unload any filament from the printer that still might be in the extruder. For that, we open the control menu on the left side of the screen then the extrude retract menu tab at the top. We also want to make sure that we have the right temperature set for the filament that is in the extruder. Usually that is 220 degrees Celsius for PLA and 260 degrees for material like ABS. Next, we touch the retract button and wait until the retraction is finished. Then we pull back the filament from the extruder. Finally, we wait until the hot end cools down to under 50 degrees Celsius to avoid any injuries when touching the hot end. Depending on how far your heated bed is currently away from the nozzle, we need to move it further down to create enough space to unscrew the nozzle in the next steps. In the control menu on the movement, select the Z Home button on the right hand side, otherwise the printer will refuse to move the heated bed in the next step. When the homing is finished, Select 30 mm for movement distance and bring the heated bed down as much as possible to have the most amount of space to work. Power off the printer now for safety concerns, you may also unplug the power cord. For easier access, you might now pull the tool head towards the front a bit. Next, we want to find the right tools in the provided tool cut that came with the printer. We will need the nozzle wrench and the 2 mm Allen key. I prefer to use a 2mm hex ball head screwdriver, but the Allen key will of course be enough to work with. Push the tool head to one side and start removing the screw that holds the cover in place. You're looking for the screw that bulks out a bit off the side, not the sunken screws that are close by. Repeat the process on the other side. Now carefully pull the tool head cover to the front at the lower end and slightly lift it up so it unhooks from the two hook pins at the top. Turn it sideways and locate the fan plug on the tool head PCB. Carefully pull out the fan plug and put the cover aside. Now it's time to remove the heat sock from the hot end. Do this very carefully. Gently squeeze the rubber and slightly twist it back and forth until it releases from the hot end so you can pull it off. Take the nozzle wrench and unscrew the nozzle tip counterclockwise. In the beginning, when you do this first time, there might be a bit more resistance to overcome. Eventually, you should be able to screw the nozzle out with your fingers. At this point, I hope you did not forget to wait until the nozzle cooled down, otherwise you're gonna burn your fingers. If you're now wondering why the old nozzle looks so much different in color than the fresh one, that is due to high temperature oxidating the surface of the brass, and so don't worry, it's still fine. Now let's screw the new nozzle into the heater thread. We should be able to do this all the way until it's completely in. Now we want to tighten the nozzle, but this time don't use the long lever, just take the wrench like a screwdriver and hand tighten the nozzle, that is enough. Don't over crank it. Put the heat sock back over the hot end. Make sure that the bulky side faces to the back and slide it over until it sits firmly on and the nozzle tip is visible. Now take the cover and carefully plug the fan cable back into the connector on the tool head PCB. Make sure that you have the right orientation, it should go in with a gentle push. 
Make sure the fan cable is not sticking out to the side. So push it in and slide the cover over the two top pins and then rotate it down so it sits flush on the tool head. Reinsert and tighten the cover screws on the left and right hand side. I'm using my ball head screwdriver as it's magnetic, which makes sure the screw is not falling down, but you can of course use the provided Allen key again. For the first screw, use one hand to push the cover down to the tool head so the holes align for better insertion of the screw. Repeat on the other side. Congratulations, you just finished your first nozzle swap on the Creality K1C. Now it's time to set the correct nozzle diameter in your slicer program. If you forget this and you switch to a bigger nozzle diameter, you would get completely under extruded prints. So let's make sure we get this right. First, we want to do this in Creality Print. So in Creality Print on the right hand side, you can see your list of printers here in this drop down menu. And I've selected my K1C. And what you want to do now to switch to another nozzle diameter. And again, if you didn't switch to a bigger nozzle at this point, you can skip this whole point because you don't need to do this. But I switched to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. That's why I'm showing this to you. And we go and click the Manage button. And here on the left hand side, we make sure again that we have selected the right printer, the K1C 0.4. And now we click the Create button. And we want to give this printer a distinct name, stating that this is the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And surprise, surprise, here in this drop down list, we don't find any other nozzle diameters yet. And that could change in the future if Creality updates this program, but for now, at the time of making this video, there is no other option, but we can work around this and you can trust me, it still works. So let's just click create from here. And now effectively we have a copy of the 0.4 millimeter printer profile. And the only thing that we want to change here now is going to the extrusion one tab here in this menu. We want to change the nozzle diameter to 0.6 or 0.8, depending on what you chose. And then we finally have the settings of line width that we also want to change here to 0.6. So all of the line width we want to change and make sure that we set this to the correct new nozzle diameter of 0.6 or 0.8, depends on what you chose. Now this could be everything that we need. We just hit the save button and then we have our default parameters here on the right hand side. We have a normal print profile with a layer height of 0.2 millimeters. If we click on edit here, you will see that it also took the extruder settings as the default values for these profiles. So you might consider now creating a couple more thicker layer profiles because if you switch to a bigger nozzle diameter, you could also have higher layers for faster printing, but you don't have to do this. We could just go and use this profile now and print a first test print. So I've added the bench editor print surface and I will slice this file now and send it to the printer. And we're gonna take a look at the result and compare it with a 0.4 millimeter Benchy print, just to show you the difference. One last tip that I wanna give you, if you wanna use LAN printing and you're wondering why your printer is not showing up in the list of printers now once we have changed the nozzle diameter. So this will only apply to the people who have changed the nozzle diameter and they are wondering why they don't find their printer in the network anymore. We need to uncheck this printer match checkbox and then we will find our printer. Now we can select the printer and start the print. One last note before we look at the results of this print. The attentive ones of you probably realized that suddenly when we created this new profile, the, all the materials disappeared from this list. And there's actually also no way currently to manage or add new materials when we switch to the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And that might have to do with the fact that Creality didn't yet create any way to add a real 0.6 millimeter profile. I have found one workaround though for this problem. I went back to the list of printers and first of all, I deleted this new printer and all of the profiles. And then I went back to the 0.4 millimeter printer changed all the nozzle diameters to 0.6, also the line width. That at least brought me back the filaments. However, if you previously changed any of the line width settings in any of the print profiles to something else, like in this one, you would have to go back also to each of these print profiles and change that to 0.6 at least. 
because any changes that you made later in the print profiles overrides what's set in the printer settings. But yeah, I think this is a temporary solution until Creality fixes this problem. That is one of the reasons why I switched to Orca Slicer very early on in the process. But before we talk about Orca Slicer, let's have a look at the print results. So I want to let you take a guess which one of these benches has been printed with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle and which one was printed with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. If you've guessed right, you will have noticed that the left one was printed with 0.4 millimeter nozzle at 0.2 millimeter layer height and the right one was printed with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle at 0.2 millimeter layer height and they look very similar but if we look closer we might realize that we lost a little bit of detail but the print on the right hand side with the 0.6 also looks a bit cleaner that's maybe a combination of that nozzle being fresh and also that we have a little less print detail and that smoothes out all of the details a tiny bit but nevertheless i think that this is a very respectable result this is very good so changing to 0.6 millimeter is probably not a bad thing to print faster while still retaining a lot of detail now coming back to this issue in Creality Print where we didn't have any of the materials available. Why did this still print? Because it's using probably some kind of default print parameters. It printed at 200 degrees Celsius material temperature that's suitable for PLA and 60 degrees bed temperature. So that's why it still worked. But again, it doesn't uh, support any material selection at the moment. And that's why I think it's absolutely necessary to talk about Orca Slicer. I am currently using Orca Slicer for all of my 3D printers, even the Bamboo Labs, because Orca Slicer now supports all of the 3D printers I own. So it's very much useful for me because I don't have to switch between different programs and I can use and compare those slicer profiles much easier. So let's quickly take a look how the Creality K1C would be added in Orca Slicer. Now, if you start Orca Slicer for the first time and you don't have yet any 3D printer added to this program, you will likely get this kind of dialogue here. And here you will have to make your printer selection. Now you could scroll through this list and just looking at this list, you will realize there's so many printers now being supported by this program, but you can also just easily search for K1C and you will find this printer here. And now you see it already supports different nozzle diameters. So Orca Slicer is even faster than Creality Print. What we're gonna do here, uh, of course, if you have the default printer and you wanna start out with the 0.4, you just select this nozzle diameter, but now we can also select our new 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So let's confirm that. And what you will find then in your list of 3D printers is different 3D printers. I have a lot of 3D printers in this list, but you will find under the system presets, you will find your Creality K1C either with the 0.4 millimeter or now the new K1C Creality with 0.6 nozzle. And then you also get a lot of default filaments like the Creality High Speed PLA and some default print settings. Now the default print settings are very, very default. So you would have to create different profiles now for different layer heights. And for a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, what I would recommend as a default is going to 0.3 millimeter layer height because that's 50% of the nozzle diameter, which is kind of the default and will get you reasonable quality and higher print speeds for creating these kind of prototyping prints. And if you want more detail, you can also go back to 0.2 millimeter layer height with the bigger nozzles. And for a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, you can probably start at 0.4 millimeter and see where that takes you and also dial down the layer heights to get more detail with this bigger nozzle diameter. One thing to add here about printing over the network to a Creality K1C, by default, it only supports using a USB stick, putting it into your computer, copying the file there and putting the USB stick into the printer. If you want to use Orca Slicer to print over the network, you have to make some software changes that I will put in a separate video. And if you look out for that video on my channel, that video is going to be called Unleash the Creality K1C Clipper. 
Moonraker, Fluid, Mainsail, Camp, Guppy Screen and much more. So if that video is released, you will also learn how to make these changes to your Creality K1C, the Ender 3 V3, the Ender 3 V3 KE and all of the K1 series printers. So that's basically covering the software changes that will be required, for example, to open up network printing over Orca Slicer and other features that you might be interested in. So watch out for that video on my channel. Now, one last thing to notice here, if you are switching to a bigger nozzle diameter, you would probably want to do some extrusion calibration again. And what Orca Slicer also supports, similar to Creality Print, max flow rate test. Because the max flow rate test print on this new nozzle will tell you how much filament can you now push through this new nozzle and then you will find the upper limit of this new nozzle setup with the given filament that you're trying to use and then you can change your profile settings to adapt to these higher settings hopefully higher flow rate settings so you can actually print faster with this new nozzle otherwise if you don't change that and you're still keeping the same max flow rate settings you would actually not realistically be printing faster because not more filament is going to come out of the nozzle and the printer would actually try to slow down the print. That's not what you want. You want to figure out what is the max flow rate on this new nozzle with the given filament. If you want to know more, let me know in the comment section what you like to know about, what videos I should make about this topic because there's so much to cover honestly and we're just getting started. So I hope this video gave you a good overview why you would want the new Unicorn nozzles on your Creality K1C, how to install them and how to set up your slicing program. If you found value watching this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel for new videos to get alerted. And I'm going to see you next time back again here on a Crossing channel. Until then, I wish you happy printing. Bye bye.